The first thing that you must understand about put call parity is that it's based on the assumption that there is no arbitrage opportunities. And so what we'll be doing with put call parity is basically looking at two separate portfolios and making sure that the values of both are equal. If they are not equal, then there's an opportunity for arbitrage and the put call parity does not hold. Now, let me articulate on this further with an example. So we're gonna be looking at an example stock with the following characteristics in this inputs table. The stock's underlying price, S, is going to be $39 right now today. The strike price or the exercise price, K, on call and put options is going to be $40. The time to expiration, T, is just one year from today. And the risk-free rate, R, is 10%. So using the Black Scholes Merton pricing option, which is outside of the scope of this video, I have priced the call option to be worth $6.02 and the put option to be worth $3.22. Um, now that we know all of this, Let's take a look at the put call parity formula. So this is the formula. There is a left side over here, which represents our portfolio A, and there is a right side here, which represents our portfolio B. In order for put call parity to hold true and for there to be zero arbitrage opportunities, the left side, portfolio A, must be exactly equal to the right side, portfolio B. If it's not, then we can profit. So let's just walk through both of the portfolios. On the left side, we're looking at a long call option, C, and we're looking at the discounted strike price. So you can think of this as a zero coupon bond that pays out the value of the strike price at expiration one year from today. Now let's find out what both of these are worth today. So the long call is just going to be equal to the $6.02. The discounted cash, we just need to discount this $40 by uh, continuously compounding of interest by the risk-free rate for one year. So we can do equal to K times, so we're going to take to the power of E, which in Excel is the EXP function, negative risk-free rate, times time to expiration, duration, which is just one year. So all we did is just discount 40 bucks back to the present value of today by one year. Now we can sum the two of these up and we find that this portfolio's total value is $42.22. Now, portfolio B is a long put option and long one stock share. So the long put value is going to be equal to this $3.22 right here. And the stock price is just going to be equal to this $39 today. And if we sum these two up, we will find that portfolio B is worth $42.22. And so we can see that right now, put call parity holds true. And it should because I calculated these based on the Black Scholes Merton uh, models uh, values. But what would happen if these didn't hold true? Let's say if there was some mispricing in the market, and instead of being worth $6, this call was actually worth $5. You're gonna see questions like this on a test if you're studying this put call parity forward test. And so now we're looking at an example where portfolio A is worth $41.19 and portfolio B is worth $42.22. How would I profit off of this mispricing in the marketplace? That's probably a question you might get on a test. And so the easiest way that I think about this is that you're going to want to go for and purchase whichever one is cheaper and you're going to want to sell whichever one is more expensive, right? So for me, portfolio B is less appealing. These should be equal, but this is priced more. So I want the thing that's cheaper. So what I can do actually is instead of going long a put, I can short a put. So I write that put option. I get $3.22 today. I can also short the stock, so I get the $39. Now I've got $42.22 in my pocket. Then what I can do is I can go and buy the call option for $5, and I can go and lend the discounted cash 
at 30, I'll get $36, or sorry, I will give someone $36.19 today. In a year, I would receive $40. And basically, I've got two things, two portfolios offsetting each other that will pay off the same thing no matter what at expiration. And I've just pocketed the difference between the two of these values. So I just made myself a dollar and two cents today with zero risk. And let me show you why specifically this is zero risk, this strategy. Because no matter what happens to stock price in the future, these, same, these portfolios will pay off the exact same amount at all different stock prices. So let's go down and take a look at that. So now I'm going to prove to you that portfolio A and portfolio B will always have the same payoffs no matter what the stock's price is. And we're gonna be illustrating that by using about 12 different stock prices that you can see over here in column A. So let's, let's map out these payoffs for each of these different potential situations. So portfolio A, right, was the call option, the long call, and the zero coupon loan. And so for the call option, I've put the payoff formula right here. So call payoff is just equal to the maximum of the stock's price right here, minus the strike price up here of $40, or zero. So before I even hit submit, we can tell that this is going to be worth zero dollars because this side of the formula is going to be 34 minus 40, which is negative six. And so zero is higher than that. And we can drag this all the way down. And we'll see that the call option starts becoming valuable once we go past the strike price of $40. And it just keeps getting more valuable as the stock price goes further higher than $40. The cash payoff no matter what, is always going to be the same. The zero coupon bond is going to pay off $40 no matter what happens to the stock's price. So we can just drag this all the way down. This means that the total payoff for portfolio A is going to be the sum of the calls payoff and that $40 cash at each different stock price. And we can just drag this down. And we can see that it's always worth $40 until we go past that exercise price and then it starts becoming more valuable. Now let's look at the payoff for portfolio B. And so we've got the put payoff formula here, which is going to be the flip side of the call payoff. So let's do equals max. So the puts payoff is going to be equal to that exercise price of $40 minus this stock price, which will start at $34 or zero. So it can never be worth less than zero. You'll see it's a bit the opposite of the calls payoff. So if we drag this down, we'll see that the put is actually valuable when the stock price is lower and it's less valuable when the stock's price is higher, which is just the opposite of the call option. Now the stock's value is just gonna be equal to the stock price in each different uh, scenario. And let's drag this down and we can find the total payoff for each of these different stock prices by just summing the put options payoff and the stocks pay off for each of the scenarios and dragging it down. And what you'll see is that it does not matter what the stock's price is, the total payoff will always be exactly the same for both portfolios. And that's why if we find a scenario where one portfolio is cheaper than the other portfolio today, we can just pocket that difference immediately and then not worry about what happens in the future because it will always end up the same value that we're paying out or receiving no matter which portfolio that we choose. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe for future content just like this. And if you're curious how I came up with these call option, put option prices, check out my video on the Black-Scholes option pricing model in Excel right here. Thank you for watching.